Hey guys, it's Sam and this is Top 5 Wednesday. If you are new to Top 5 Wednesday, I will leave a link to the Goodreads group down below for topics. This week's topic is our favorite spooky settings. Now, I also preface this with the fact that like I'm not a fan of horror and scariness, so you can also just do like creepy atmospheric fall type settings and kind of take it, you know, eclectic macabre settings and that's what I'm gonna do because like I said, I'm not a fan of scary, but I can do like really atmospheric borderline creepy but not macabre atmospheric. I've said that already. <laughs> Settings. Number five is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern because it's the most atmospheric book ever, but also because I just think circus settings are really good for this, that I really like settings, like not creepy haunted circuses completely at all. Like I will not, no, 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 no. But if you juxtapose the great, awesome, bright, brilliant, beautiful, happy, fun circus with like some creepier like elements to it or creepy like tents or whatever, or a creepy like backbone, kind of like how this is, like, like not creepy because this isn't scary in any way, but just that the underpinnings of it aren't what you'd expect. I really like that. I think there were some tents in here, there were some tents in here that you could see that weren't like happy cheery tents or whatever that could be like a little like, ooh, like a little, a little creepy. So I like this one. It's not a totally spooky setting, but it's like just spooky enough. Number four is a creepy forest setting, and I think this is done really well in Uprooted by Naomi Novik. This has like a haunted wood, you know, wood capitalized around it, and it's really well done and really cool. And I really like kind of, like, again, not haunted forests, because again, I am scared of everything, but this like creepy, you know, nature kind of, nature versus man kind of thing, and like primeval kind of like stuff that's really old in the forest, like that's really cool to me. And that there can be, you know, like fairies and like everything in the forest leprechauns, you know, like in the forest. And I love that, like that if you go back far enough that it can be like a whole new world. There's actually a really cool post on Tumblr and if I can find it, I will link it. I just thought of it while I was doing this. So there's a really cool post that like, someone's basically saying, what if forests were to like oceans and the farther in that you got, like the more stuff got weird. And someone actually did like a, painting comic of it where someone got like lost in the forest and at the like end panel there's this really cool like beast that they see walking by and it's such a cool image and stuff like that is what I love like that's so cool and oh it's so cool or like big like huge trees and like moss and just like weird magical beasts like oh yes I just love like fantasy forests they speak to me. Number three is the Moors or the Misty Moors and this is really done well in like Jane Eyre or Wuthering Heights and the reason I even mention this is I loved Wuthering Heights when I read it as a teenager and it's you know like a tragedy and it's crazy and I love it but there's a Netflix it was on Netflix I don't know if it is anymore I think it's BBC but it is a mini series of Wuthering Heights and Tom Hardy plays Heathcliff and it's so over the top but it's so good like it's so angsty but the moors and everything is just like so creepy but again it's not like haunted or anything but it's a really good gothic setting and I like a good gothic setting without being too scary and the moors is like the perfect gothic setting and especially in that miniseries which again like I said totally over the top totally angsty like crazy but I love it and the moors provide that like melodramatic background that I adore Number two is Henrietta from the Raven Boys. This series is like the creepiest that I will go, honestly, and I'm actually really scared to read like the last two books in the series because I heard I'm gonna be scared and I'm not in the mood. But this series has such a good creepy setting that you just are feeling creeped out kind of the entire time in this series. It's not like outright scary, at least in the first two books, but it just has this like vibe of like kind of a borderline southern gothic feeling in like a modern day paranormal setting and it's done so well and just the way it's written is just like you feel that vibe constantly and it's done so well. And this is like, like I said, the scariest that I'll go. This is like probably the only truly spooky setting on here and I love it. And number one is my absolute favorite and you guys can, maybe might be able to guess it but it is the underworld slash going between life and death. I have so many books about this and not even just like Hades Persephone based books obviously, but just books about going between life and death and like the underworld and whatever. I love it so much. And I don't love it again when it's like creepy scary, but when it's like, you know, macabre atmospheric, it just, it just gets me every single time. The first series that ever got me into this was the Abhorsen. It used to be a trilogy by Garth Nix, but this is actually the prequel and then another book that's a sequel just came out, I think it's called Golden Hand, and I 
love this series. Like this has a kind of magical person that is called the Aporson and they go between the, like kind of like the river sticks between life and death and they are meant to bind the dead to make sure they don't escape because they can kind of come through like almost other dimensions like other realms kind of thing through like death which again is borderline for me but I read it in high school and I love it and it's really nostalgic so I love this series and this whole life and death thing speaks to me on so many levels. It's also a setting in the Archive by Victoria Schwab and in this there's a character that goes between life and death and there are things called histories which are kind of like ghosts but they're really just people's like memories almost and sometimes they'll escape the archive like the library that they're being put in and she has to go and like trap them make sure they don't do that. It's like a life and death thing. I love it. Then we obviously have Hades and Persephone retellings like The Goddess Test and Everneath and The Star Touched Queen. So many books. If I know a book is going to have that underworld element to it or like the between life and death especially, like that's my favorite, the going between life and death thing. So spot on. So if I know a book's going to have that, I need to have it. And that's like the creepiest setting that I can really deal with. And again, I don't want to be like scary, but I like I like the whole like exploring the underworld thing. It's so cool. So that is it for my favorite spooky settings. Comment down below and let me know some of your favorite spooky settings. Please don't scare me though because I'm not into that. But I prefer these kinds of like atmospheric settings. So if you have any recommendations for books that are similar to this and have that, like especially if you have recommendations for like between life and death kind of books, comment down below and let me know. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!